What's on guys, just back to my channel, tonight I'll be doing a review for AW Dynamite and Rampage will be a two video So yeah, there, tonight was a back, back to back um, shows with AW Dynamite and Rampage Pretty good shows tonight and stuff and um Just gonna get back to it, I mean get, sorry, get to it then um, Talked about uh, Tony Khan sitting in Jacksonville's Jaguars office Obviously, where he informs us he will be running tonight's show because he, ha <clears throat> excuse me, he has not been cleared to travel. All right, he talks about tonight being the AEW return of Kenny Omega in his hometown of Winnipeg as he continues to talk. The production starts glitching out, and then we see the Young Bucks uh, sitting in the control room inside the Canadian uh, Life Center in Winnipeg. They talk about how Khan's feet has dropped and explain that due to their founders. Uh, clause in their contracts, their jobs are secure in AEW. On top of that, their deal said that if Khan is unable to run the show for any reason, they are legally in charge. Uh, they say, with that in mind, they are running things tonight. They tell a production assistant to hit the new opening for AEW Dynamite, a new opening video that only features the Young Bucks, Jack Perry, and Kajushka Okada. That's the oh, I said the first full name right and so so yeah um the music playing for the video also has a lyric that says cry me a river as we see a shot of the back of perry's leather jacket from recent njbw which is a new japan pro wrestling show that says cry me a river the same line that led to his backstage fight with cm punk in london Alright, we have a segment coming up inside the arena. The theme for Swerve Strickland has an outcome person not doing good, yes. Uh, but always doing entertaining dance as the AEW World um, Champion emerges and the two head to the ring to kick off, kick off this week's show. Swerve talks about um, how what the Young Bucks did to Tony Khan last week was a bitch move. Prompting the Young Bucks to cut in live from backstage on the big screen. The Young Bucks tell Swerve he seems a bit arrogant since winning the big one as the first thing he did was use profanity on the air after becoming AEW World Champion. They say that would be a fine thing. Then reveal his opponent for his title defense at AEW Double Nothing. The theme for Christian Cage hits and out comes the Canadian legend he sells in the ring. And stares, uh, swerve down as fans chant Christian, Christian. Uh, Christian ends up sucker punching swerve and attacking him. Swerve fights back, but kill switch, um, uh, uh, see me, uh, ends up taking he, he and Nana, uh, Nana out. Christian follows up hit, hit by hitting his kill switch finisher on swerve on the AW World Championship belt. They pick up Nana and feed him to Nick Wayne, who connects with his Wayne's world finisher on him. Christian gets on the mic and says something Swerve should know about him that he never forgets. He talks about how not too long ago he broke into his son Nick Wayne's gym and savagely assaulted him. Um, he says he also hasn't forgotten that once upon a time the two were attacked team at the biggest show in the history of this business and you lost and bears me he says he's been waiting for the right time to make him pay for that and with him being a w world champion he feels now is the best time to do that he gets personal and brings up swerve saying he was so focused and dedicated on achieving his dreams that his kid barely knows him he says he's gonna become a father for his kid that he the kid can look up to. Um, he tells him the pain has just begun and yanks the dreadlock out of his head to end the segment. I felt like I saw blood on that on the braid of his you know, sort of his hair. I feel like I saw something. Um, anyways, uh we have the first match coming up is TNT Championship Cope Open Cope Open Challenge, which is Al Copen versus Buddy Matthews. I'm sorry, guys. I, God, I need some yawning. <laughs> a video match from the House of Black airs to hype the TNT Championship match, match uh, that one of the members will be having against reigning title holder Adam Copeland tonight. They say Copeland will find out which of them 
It will be the same time the world does after this wraps up. We return inside the arena at a at M Copeland's team hits, and out comes the radar superstar for his latest um Cope Open Challenge defense of his TNT Championship. He gets a big pop from uh his home country, uh crown in Canada, and sells in the ring. The lights go out, and we hear a message from his opponent taunting him. The music starts playing. Uh, as Copeland looks around, out comes Buddy Matthews to answer the challenge. After some early back and forth action, we see Matthews sell into the early offensive lead with Copeland on the floor at ringside trying to recover. We should get ahead to a mid match commercial break as the bout continues. Um, when we return from the break, we see Matthews drop Copeland with a draping DDT off the ropes. Matthews. Uh, stomps Copeland down in the corner and follows with the snap mare and a kick to the back. Matthews uh, applies a rare choke, but Copeland fights to his feet and backs Matthews into the corner. Matthews keeps the hold applied, but Copeland finally gets free. Copeland slams Matthews down, and then they go both up top and exchange shots, and they both fall to the floor. They both get back into the ring at the nine count and exchange shots. Copeland goes for the impaler, but Matthews gets a, gets free and delivers an elbow strike. Copeland comes back with an elbow strike of his own, and then both men collide with cross bodies. Uh, the referee calls for the doctor as Matthews um, begins uh, bleeding from his mouth, and the show heads to a commercial with the commentary commentators. Putting their serious um, voices on during the picture picture break. A uh, few times we see Matthews on the map with the rev checking on him again. When we return, however, the crowd is worrying, worrying, and the match is still going. Copeland ends up hitting a spear for the win. After the match, the radar superstar isn't satisfied, so he pounds away at still grounds. Matthews, after hit getting the win, Copeland rolls out to the floor. And grabs two steel chairs. The commentators, commentators says the mist in his eyes recently has made him crazy. He lays one chair under Matthew's uh, head and grabs the other. Before he can hit the con chair to the lights go out. Uh, when they come back on, Malachi Black is standing next to Copeland. He calmly tells him, do it. Matthew's laying uh Sorry, as I said, learns, uh, leans up from the ground and tells Copeland to hit him. As Copeland raises the chair above his head, the lights go out again when they come back on on this time. Both Matthews and Malachi are nowhere to be found. We had to another uh, break with Joe Cassidy coming up next. So winner and still TNT champion, Am Copeland. Our next match is uh, Samoa Joe versus Isaiah Cassidy. As we sell back from, in from the break, we hear the familiar sounds of Samoa Joe's theme music. Out comes the former AEW um damn, I'm sorry guys. Oh shit. From former AEW World Champion for our next match of the evening. The Pride Party uh theme hits next and now comes Isaiah Cassie. The bell sounds are official off from this one. Uh Cassie goes to the corner and puts Joe's towel around his neck. While dancing Joe uh grabs the towel and backs Cassie into the corner by Cassie rakes his eyes, um, Cassie comes off the top rope, but Joe throws him down to the mat. Joe delivers right hand into the corner and then follows with the rapid, uh, body shots to send Cassie to the floor. Uh, Joe goes through the ropes, but Cassie gets back into the ring. Joe gets on the apron, but Cassie catches him with a springboard kick. Cassie goes for a dive over the top, over the ropes, but Joe walk, walks away, and Cassie crashes to the floor. Joe gets Cassie back into the crowd, and but Cassie comes with the throw punch. Cassie delivers a drop kick and falls with the right hands in the corner. Cassie goes for a monkey flip, but Joe holds on and delivers a right hand. Joe del uh, delivers the muzzle buzzer and gets the pinfall. After the this match wraps up, we see a message from Sky Blue. She calls Will Nango a fraud and is only the champion because of Stokely Hathaway. Uh, Blue challenges uh, Nightingale to a title match later tonight on AW Rampage. So winner is Smoke Joe. All right, I have a segment coming up and stuff, and um, drink this real quick. I was kind of dry.
Sorry, I always do that with it. Every time a segment comes up and stuff, because there's no match. Anyways, um, I have uh, Orange Cassidy uh, a segment and stuff. Pressure squeeze, Orange Cassidy uh, makes his way into the ring. Um, Cassidy says he hates this because he thought Chuck Taylor and Trent Barrett would get everything out of their systems after the parking lot uh, fight and that they be back in the ring as best friends. Cassidy says that isn't going to happen because he has been told Taylor will never wrestle again after what Breda did to him. Uh, after the parking lot fight, Cassidy begins to call Breda, but Breda interrupts him. Brett says it's shocking that Cassidy is trying to make everything about him again. And Cassidy charges at him. Security holds Cassidy back as Brett says it is Cassidy's fault that Taylor's career is over. Chris Dentlander finally calms Cassidy down and then Don Callis comes out and whispers in Cassidy's ear. Cassidy leaves with Callis as Dentlander t- yells at Brett. Oh man, I don't know what happened there. I don't know why Don Callis is talking to Orange Cassidy and stuff. It's weird. All right, we shoot backstage where Renee Paquette standing by with the Young Bucks. Paquette interviews with the, uh, interviews the AEW EVP duo from the Elite. Matthew says they don't really have time for this because they are looking for an old friend. Matthew asks if she has been has has seen him, but has no. Uh, and then Nicholas says they have taken too much time, too much TV time. And it's time for Jack Perry to get some. The Bugs leave and Renee asks Perry about what he did last week. Perry says everyone has to sacrifice eventually. And thanks to Tony Khan's sacrifice, AEW is entering a new era under the elite. That's how the brief uh, backstage segment wraps up. Alright, next match is a FTW uh, championship match. The Leaning Tree. Uh, Chris Jericho, who is a champion versus Kajori Kishibata. Um... Uh, Back inside the Canadian Live Center, we get ready for our next match of the evening, evening which features the FTW uh, on the line on uh, reigning champion, the leaning, the learning tree. Uh, Chris Jericho makes his way out as his opponent, the wrestler. Uh, Chris Jericho Shibata. God damn it. Um, the bell sounds of, and off we go. The FTW Championship, which is... Uh, being contested under FTW rules, which means anything go- goes. Jericho takes Shibata down, but uh, Shibata comes right back up and applies a rare headlock to Jericho to take him down. Jericho gets to his feet, but Shibata backs, in- backs him into the ropes. They exchange uh, chops and Jericho to Shibata down again. Jericho connects with the line sword and goes for the cover, but Shibata kicks out at one Jericho grabs a trash can lid and hits Shibata in the head with it. After that, uh, Jericho dumps a bag of hockey pucks in the ring, but Shibata slams him down and onto them. And says Shibata follows uh with a suplex to Jericho on the pucks and then stomps his back. Shibata chops Jericho a few times and then Jericho comes back with chops on his own. Uh, Shibata and Jericho continue to exchange chops back and forth uh, as we head to a mid-match commercial break as this wild tale, tale continues. As we return, we see Shibata chop Jericho in the corner. Uh, Shibata backs away and charges him, but Jericho throws a pug at him and takes him down. Jericho applies the walls of Jericho, but Shibata counters into a figure four. Jericho throws a pug and hits Shibata in the face. With it, and then grabs a trash can and two Kindle sticks from under the ring. Jericho puts the trash can over Shibata's head and hits it, uh, hits it with the Kindle stick repeatedly. Shibata gets to his feet. As Jericho continues to hit the trash can with the Kindle stick, Shibata uh, backs uh, Jericho into the corner and delivers headbutts with the trash can. Still over his head, Shibata kicks Jericho into the corner. And falls with the drop kick into the trash into the trash can. Jericho, um, Shibata goes for the cover, but Jericho kicks out. Shibata gives one of the kendo sticks at, to Jericho, and they sit down in the ring. They uh, hit each other with the kendo sticks, and Shibata takes advantage. Shibata slams Jericho onto the pucks and grabs a table from the, from uh, the ring. 
Uh, on, on, from under the ring. Uh, Shibata props the table in the corner and chops Jericho into it. Shibata backs away and charges, but Jericho counters with a code breaker for a two count. Jericho goes for the Judas effect, but Shibata counters into a rare choke. Shibata delivers an overhand and, uh, chop and sets the table in the ring. Big Bill rushes the ring and drops Shibata with a boot to the face. Big uh, Bill Shulk slams Chibata through the table and leaves the ring. Jericho crawls over and gets the pin fall after the match. Big, uh, Bill tells Jericho that he told him he deserves to be in the learning tree to which Jericho nods. So we are still at FTW champion the learning tree Chris Jericho. Alright backstage we see Renee Paquette uh, standing back with Will Nightingale, Chris Stantlander, and Stokely Hathaway. Uh, Nightingale apologizes for losing her cool last week and accepts Sky Blue's challenge for a TBS Women's Championship match for uh, tonight on the AW Rampage. As they continue talking, uh, Stokely Hathaway talks uh, uh, talks negatively about the Bucks and Jack Perry attacking Tony Khan last week. They say because of that, there's no one he can go to with his problems and also isn't happy that he didn't before payday on Friday. Keep an eye on my video and stuff. We hear a message from Paquette who informs Stokely Stat and Stantlander that they are banned from ringside for Nightingale's title defense against Sky Blue on Rampage. Stokely flips out as they walk up. On that note, we should get us into no question more break. All right. Uh, next match is Claudio Casanoli versus the Machine. Brian Cage. When we return uh, inside this live center, we we hear the familiar sounds of Claudio, Claudio Casanoli theme music as the Blackpool Combat Club star makes his way to the ring for our next match of the evening. A split screen interview with him from early or from earlier today airs. The theme for his opponent is in the machine Brian Cage. The bell sounds over for sure on this one. Uh, Cage starts off well, but Casanoli hits a uh, backbreaker to slow down the momentum announced for next week's episode of AEW Diamond on Wednesday, May 8th, 2024. Is Adam Copeland versus Boro King of the House of Black for the TNT Championship, as well as a grudge match between Orange Cassidy and Trip Barretta. Uh, Cage takes over after hitting his impressive uh, power up and over the ring uh post superplex on Casanova. On that note, we should gear send it to a mid-match commercial break. As the action continues, when we turn Cage layers a thrust kick and falls with the area code shot. Um Cage delivers the uh this uh discuss Lariat and goes for the cover. But Casanova kicks out. Casanova comes back with the springboard uppercut and follows with the series of uppercuts and uh, in the corner, they exchange kicks to the face, and then Casanova delivers another uh, uppercut and follows with a thrust kick. Casanova also delivers an area code shot and follows with a disgust lariat of his own for a two count. Uh, Cage comes back with a hard shot and gets a two count, but Casanova comes off the ropes and delivers a pop up uppercut for a two count of his own. Casanova delivers the giant swing with the non nine rotations and then applies the sharpshooter. Cage goes for the rose, but Casanova pulls him back and Cage taps out. Casanova gets a win. We had to uh, commercial break. All right, the winner is Ca uh, Claudio uh, Claudio Casanova. Next match is Mariah May versus Serena D. When we turn from the break, Renee Paquette is backstage with Rocky Romero. She asks him who is signing with his with in next week's Orange Cassidy vs. Trent Barrett showdown. Romero says he is staying out of it. He talks about the goal of catching and goal in the AEW and then challenge, challenges um, Kyle Riley for a match on tonight's special live episode of AEW Rampage. That follows Dynamite back inside the arena. Theme for Mario May hits and out com actually comes accompanied by Thomas Stone Storm. The theme for her opponent hits out comes the Professor Serenity. The bell sounds in for Sean Room in this one. Deep starts off in the lead. Uh, she ties up May like a pretzel with her ass up in the air. <laughs> Unable to move. Deep drops, drop kicks her. May uh, starts to take over control of the action. We shift gears and head to match commercial break. As this one continues. When, as we, uh, when we return, we see Mari May 
almost get the win with Storm, Storm's hip attack on her own uh, Mayday knee, but Dean hangs on. She locks May in a single uh, late Boston crab, and Storm throws the and towel with the win. Dean is now the challenger for Storm's AEW Women's World Championship at AEW Double or Nothing. Chance to for All right, so winner and no one contender in Storm Dean. All right, main event excitement time coming up. After a quick backstage interview where Renee Paquette asks if Adam Copeland is okay, after seeing, uh, seeming out of it, controlling his match, he talks about his TNT champ, TNT title match next week against Brody King. And then Kyle Wright comes in and sings Copeland's praises. Back inside the Canadian Life Center, we see the Debbie Ebber, Justin Roberts long drawn dramatic ring entrance for the cleaner. Kenny Omega out, he comes in a suit with sunglasses on getting a huge response from his crowd, home crowd in Winnipeg. Uh, Omega sells in rain and the fans chant, Welcome home, welcome home. He says that um, they are making this easy. He says he's not in, good at this. He's not good at talking about injuries, sickness, and weakness. He talks about being diagnosed with uh, diverticulitis. Man, it sucks. Um... He says the doctor told him he almost died. He says he was told he would have have to get what is inside of out of him. The doctor told him it could take six months, nine months, a year, or maybe the rest of his of your life. He says if he doesn't, uh, it'll be like a ticking time bomb where the where any force to his stomach could kill him. That's true. The cleaner uh, says. Since the since that day, he can't lie. He had to stop watching. He had to stop watching because his hands would shake. His voice breaks as he says, "For the first time in his life, he felt pathetic." Pathetic. No, you're not. He, uh, and like a coward. No, you're not. And he says he felt like this whole thing was for him to come out and say he's got to retire. But then he turned A W on and finally watched again. Kenny uh, says he watched um, uh, AEW Dynasty and saw Swerve become AEW champion. He says uh, Brian Dennis and Will Osprey have one of the best matches he's ever seen in his life. He says he thought he felt normal again, but then he noticed his hands, shake, hands shaking even uh, worse. He says then he came out here tonight and he heard the fans chant, fans chants and cheers. He says he realized he was withdrawing. He says he needs to get back in this ring. He says uh, already he's been forgotten in the conversation for who the best pro wrestler in the world. Um, he says so he may uh, promote um, to himself. He's going to make the same promise to all of us. He says he's not going to stop until he exhausts every option. If there's a 5% or even 1%, He's got to come back. Omega then talks about uh, two other punks. He brings up uh, Matthew and Nicholas Jackson. He says they aren't the only EVPs in AEW. They forgot he's also an EVP of AEW. He says they can kick him out of the elite, but they can't kick him out of AEW. The name for Kajuska, uh Okada hits, and out comes the Rainmaker from the elite. As he heads to the ring, Dynamite wraps up and Excalibur tells us it's time to transition to Rampage. Omega tells Okada they had a rivalry once. He says he uh he says give him a few months and they'll share the ring again. He says I mean he asks what he thinks. Okada says, I'm sorry, Kenny, I'm the best bout machine now. Well that said, Jack Perry knocks out Omega with a cheap uh shot from behind. He grabs a chair and Okada is taken out from out again out of the ring. He goes after Jack Perry and knees, um, knees him to in the gut over and over again. As a commercial reminds us, any blunt force trauma to his stomach could literally kill him. Omega te tears his bottom uh, up shirt and opens and does a gun gesture to him. He uh, hits the ropes, but Okada trips. Came up from the floor and Perry blasts him in the gut with his chair. 
Uh, the Bucks make their way out from the back, looking confused. They enter the ring and tell Carl Perry and Perry to relax. They acted like the two went too uh, far, but then Omega starts crawling their back, uh, bodies and puts himself in with the EVP trigger uh, position. I'm keeping my, my camera on. It was messing up a little bit. I'm sorry, guys. Matthew and Lucas tried to drown him with the EVP trigger and then FTRs. Theme hits and out comes Dax Harwood and Cash Rear to run them off. Down reports of tonight's double header wraps up Dino and gets covered to the stay tuned for AW Rampage with uh Rampage which starts live now. So yeah, uh that was it for Dynamite and um I'll see you guys in the next video for right now for AW Rampage. Laters.